Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. It's kind of exponential and polynomial at the same time. So we have e to the power 1 minus x squared equals x, and we're going to be solving for x values. What else could we solve for, right? But I still want to say that. So I'll be presenting a couple different approaches and also show you two graphs at the end. So first of all, let's go ahead and focus on the original functions without doing anything else. We have e to the power 1 minus x squared. This is an interesting function, and you'll see the graph of this function towards the end of the video. And it's kind of similar to what I would call the probability density function. It's not the exact same type of equation, but it's similar because of the uh, negative x squared in the exponent. Okay? So let's go ahead and explore this function. What kind of function are we dealing with? Is this increasing or is this always decreasing because if we know we then it's easier to solve because y equals x is always increasing if you have a decreasing function on the left then they can only intersect at a single point make sense okay so let's go ahead and uh, look at the first derivative of our exponential function we don't know yet if it's decreasing or in increasing or on which intervals that can happen so let's go ahead and call this f of x equals e to the power 1 minus x squared. And then let's differentiate it. First derivative. You know it's e to the power the function times the derivative of the inside, which is the exponent by chain rule, and that's going to be negative 2x. Now one thing to keep in mind. e to the power 1 minus x squared, if x is a real number, and we're dealing with real numbers here, are there complex solutions? That's a good question. Something to think about. But uh, let's look for real solutions. And if for real x, this is always going to be positive. All right? So the sign for f prime is going to be determined by negative 2x, which means our function, if x is positive, it's going to be the derivative is negative, otherwise it's positive. So let's go ahead and make a quick table x, f prime, and f. And 0 is the root for f prime because this is this can't equal zero right and like i said earlier if x is positive this is going to be negative right so we're going to have a negative derivative otherwise positive derivative this kind of means that our function is increasing and then decreasing so it's not always increasing or always decreasing but it's doing different things on different intervals but this should give you a go good idea what the graph is going to look like and then we can evaluate what happens at 0. Uh, f of 0 is going to be e to the power 1, which is e. So at 0, we have a point e. So something like this. At 0, it's going to go through e. And our function is decreasing and increasing. Obviously, that's not the graph, but I just wanted to show you uh, what's going to happen. And obviously, this will create a maximum point at 0, comma e. Right? So we have a max at 0, comma e. Great. Now at the same time, when this is happening, what happens with y equals x, right? y equals x is going to be positive when x is positive and negative when x is negative. But it's just a straight line, right? So it's just a straight line like this. And how are they going to intersect? Well, you can kind of tell from the graph that they should intersect at a single point. But why is that happening? Let's talk about that. So here's what happens. When x is positive, our y is positive, and when x is negative, y is negative, because we are dealing with like something like g of x equals x, right? So the, the x, uh, the sine of g of x will be determined by x, right? So positive, positive, and negative, negative. First and third quadrants, what does that mean? We don't have any graph in the second quadrant. But our function, the first one, f of x, is always going to be above the x-axis, right? Because it's, the y values are always positive, which means for negative x values, we can't have an intersection. If x is less than 0, then e to the power 1 minus x squared cannot equal x at any point. Make sense? But if x is positive, this is possible. Then we could have a solution. How do you find that solution? And by the way, that solution is going to be unique. And you'll see it in the graph more clearly. Uh, and you can easily find it by setting x to special values. And remember, we just talked about it. We said that 
f of 0 is equal to e. So if you replace x with 0, you're going to get e to the power 1 minus 0 equals 0. That's not true. Okay, that's not going to work. But if you replace x with 1, then you're going to get e to the power 0 equals 1. So x equals 1 is a solution. And guess what? That is the only solution for this equation. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another approach. And then at the end, I'm going to show you two graphs. So let me start with the original equation. e to the power 1 minus x squared equals x. Now, since I have an e at the base, I want to natural log both sides. It makes sense, right? So let's go ahead and ln this and ln that. And now we're going to go ahead and move the 1 minus x squared to the front because that's what the properties of log say we can do. So we're going to bring it to the front, and ln e is just going to be 1. So this is going to be 1 minus x squared equals ln x. I think we made a video on this before. I, uh, I think I did. I don't know. But if I find the link, I'll share this here and down below. But um, here's what happens. We have 1 minus x squared, which is a parabola. Again, if x is positive, it is going to be decreasing because if you look at the derivative, this is going to be negative 2x. If x is positive, this is going to be negative if x is positive, and negative 2x is going to be positive if x is negative. Make sense? And then ln x. ln x is going to be positive if x is greater than 1. So if you think about it, they can't intersect at more than one point, right? Because if you think about it, for example, if x equals 1, then obviously 0 equals 0. We have an intersection, and we already knew that from the first method, right? Yes, obviously, we did. But it also works here, x equals 1. Obviously, it's the same type of equation. The only exception would be, why are these equations, why would they be different, is in the first one, x doesn't have to be positive. In the second one, x has to be positive. But guess what? x has to be positive anyways, because for negative x values, we don't get a solution. The reason being, if x is negative, then x is negative. But e to the power 1 minus x squared is positive. It's always positive. But when x is positive, e to the power 1 minus x squared is positive. So we might have a solution, and we do. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Let's go ahead and take a look. So that is the only solution. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graphs real quick, and we'll finish up. First graph y equals x and y equals e to the power 1 minus x. Remember, I told you it's going to look like the probability density function somewhat. And they intersect at 1, 1. Because as you can see, in the second quadrant, there's no intersection. And obviously, our line does not even go through that quadrant. Right? Lines cannot go through all the quadrants. They can only go, well, sometimes they go through three quadrants. Anyways, this is one of the graphs. And the other graph is going to look like this. And as you can see here, we have a problem. Now, they could have intersected at another point here in the third quadrant. But the problem is x has to be positive. So we have a wall here, which is a vertical asymptote. Therefore, it prevents the graph going on the left-hand side. And that's why we only have one solution. And that happens to be at x equals 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.